Right guys, you can most probably hear the rain sipping down on my window. Today, what we're going to make is an oxtail stew. You can see these lovely ingredients here. I mean, there aren't many ingredients there. It's quite simple to do, but the taste is amazing. So I just want to spin you around these ingredients. You know, we've got our beef stock, some onions, some carrots, that lovely oxtail, salt, pepper, some vegetable oil, some neutral oil, some flour, and some mustard. You know, I like my mustard like I like my hip hop old school. You know, none of that uh, cheesy and surrender monkeys Dijon muck. We're going to use British Colmans, and obviously this lovely wine. You know, the old adage they say, you know, if the wine ain't good enough to uh, drink, don't cook with it. But this bad boy was twelve pounds a bottle. It's a Bordeaux. Goes great with beef. Out one of them, just to make sure it's all right. I hope this does not offend your palate. Oh, have a go. Yeah, that'll do. Anyway, okay. First thing we've got to do is we've got to coat this oxtail, and we've got to get it browned off in the pan. We want to get that caramelisation going. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of flour. I can get the lid off this. I always forget to do something. I'm going to put some of this lovely Carmen's mustard in. Quite a bit, about equal quantities. Plenty of crap that pepper. And all we're going to do is going to coat these pieces of uh, oxtail with some of that. Then build up a lovely caramelised crust on. So what we're doing is mixing it up. Pop that in there. And while I'm waiting for my pan to warm up, we'll coat these off. And we'll get back. So all I've done then is coat those. Nice even coating, get it on. Normally I'd do this in a carrier bag or a bag. But I've done it just to show you. And what we're going to do, just tap off the excess. Like that. They're all nice coated. Obviously got that lovely uh, yellow tinge on that great mustard. And they all adds to flavour, all builds up that profile. I've been watching tons of videos on YouTube but all the oxtail uh, videos I'm just laying that in that oil to brown off you know they were always doing them with funky sauces or spices you know I reckon this is the best way you know the British way simple nicely stewed so we've got my tails in the pan there you know do not touch them just put them in and leave them you know because we really want that almost burnt caramelized uh, flavor to it you know lock all those flavors in I mean, as you can see, these tails, they've got plenty of meat on them, plenty of bone, which equals plenty of gelatin, which will, you know, give you a more full-bodied flavoured stew. Obviously, which is tender and gelatinous then. Lips smackingly good, you know, all that cartilage will break down. be fantastic. So we're going to leave them to brown. I mean, they haven't been in there long. As you can see, they're just starting to take colour. But I want a real rich mahogany colour on those. Well, I went for that, I'm going to have me a slurp of this. I'm going to turn these now. As you can see, they're starting to colour up. Beef on the bone. I remember in the late 80s, I was working for Jewess, one of the biggest butchers, meat retailers in the country. You know, I remember the outbreak of the BSE. You know, the mad cow disease. You know, here in the UK, we had the biggest outbreak. You know, subsequently, many countries banned you know the import of our great british beef i mean the outbreak started in 1984 and lasted into the mid 90s uh, and the government banned the eating of brains and spinal cord now you know i don't know who eats the spinal cord cows you know but that was the cause of the cjd you know it could be transferred to humans from that brains and the spinal cord of infected animals i mean at the time in 1990 our agriculture uh, minister john gunner invited the media to film him trying to feed his daughter of four years old a burger i mean she refused you know but he ate it but i mean you wouldn't have any difference if he had it anyway give them another turn one each side to have a bit of the coloring i mean if that bsc weren't bad enough i remember in 1997 they actually banned the sale of beef on the bone. You know, the government overreacted. 
you know, so that meant no more T-bone steaks, no more ribs of beef. It was like, you know, going to your drug dealer, you know, you go to your butcher. You ain't got anything with a bit of bone in have you, mate? You know, you'd open this coat, yeah, you want one of these lovely ribs? You know, it was madness. And obviously, you'd have had no joints of sirloin, no ribs of beef, which is our birthright in Britain, you know, Lazarus beef. And obviously, you definitely wouldn't get these oxtails. I mean, the ban lasted between 97 and 99. That's when it was lifted. Of course, France, you know, they lifted their ban in 2002. Yeah, you know, merci. You know, now, obviously, beef no older than 30 months can enter the food chain. But, hey-ho, we're here today. And now uh, we're rocking this lovely towel. Whilst those are browning, then, I am going to put some, about 400 mils of this beautiful Bordeaux in here. And I'm going to boil that, just to boil that alcohol out a bit, you know, so we just left with that lovely rounded fruity flavour. I know it's a shame, but it tastes better for it. So what we'll do is we'll bring that up to the boil, very gentle, simmer it for a couple of minutes, and that alcohol will evaporate, you know, it'd be fantastic. As you can see, I've stood those tails up because I want to get them caramelised all over, but you can see how brown and caramelised they're getting. Can you, that's what you want, you know, because all that flavour that will seep into the sauce, make it really rich, you know, and lips smackingly beautiful. And obviously there is my wine just burning off. All that beautiful alcohol. What we'll do once these are browned off, and I've burned the alcohol off the wine, I'm going to transfer that to the dish, then we're going to get on with the veg. Well, they're just finishing off. Just do these. I mean, you don't want these too thin, obviously, because they're going to stew for about, well, braise for about two to three hours until that meat falls off the bone. So, just rip through them quickly. Get the ends off those. You know, nice and junky, straight through it. There's me taking the Michael out of the French, you know. I'm drinking their wine and using their cookware. So that's enough on there now. We've got the colour. As you can see, it's all nicely coloured. And what we're going to do with that oil is we're going to put our veg in there to pick up any pieces we've left of that meat and all those juices. And in goes that beautiful wine. Fantastic. And that stock you saw earlier, 450 mils of that stock as well. And obviously, I shall add a bit more to that just to cover it. Right, so there's my pan on. It's still smoking. So I'm going to take it off the heat. So I don't want these to colour. I just want them to soften. So once that's settled down, as you can hear it slowly going, I should put it gently back on the heat. Now I'm going to season this, and this is the last time I'm going to season anything for now, especially with the salt, purely because we're going to reduce that sauce, and obviously that will intensify that salt. And that's the last thing we want once we've achieved this lovely dish, is it to be too salty. So we'll let those gently sweat down, then we'll build the rest of the dish. Just going to put a few drops of Worcester sauce. And there, Worcester sauce. I'm from Worcester. This factory that's made this is about 15 minutes from my house. Fantastic. And there is only one, the Imperins. None of that other rubbish. That's the original baby. So there's my veg sharpening down. They haven't browned. The colour you can see on there is what they took off the bottom of that pan from all the residue of that meat. So that's softened nicely. And I've just put this casserole dish on a low heat ticking over. I'm going to add that and give that a stir up. As you can see I've just topped that up with a bit of water so it's all nice and covered now. So I've just transferred that to the back of the hob there and all I'm going to do is make a cartouche. So I'm going to get a bit of that off. That will roughly the square size of that dish. Fold it once, fold it twice fold it again and again so basically you're left with that and you hold it into the middle and you see where you want to cut it get my scissors and when that starts to tick over what you do is you cut, put your cartouche on 
just like that. Then obviously that keeps all the moisture in there, keeps all that flavour in. So once that gets ticking over, I mean what you can do is you can skim some of this scum off, you know. I mean it's not going to hurt you. I mean you can see how beautiful and rich and dark that sauce is, you know, and obviously the cooking in three hours, that's all going to amalgamate, you know, and get thick and beautiful. So what we do, once that's ticking over, we we'll put our cartouche on and we'll get it in the oven. As you can see that's going good now, so get me cartouche, it was a little bit big, so we just that size. What I'm doing now is starting this off here is to give it a head start. Obviously, you know, going into a oven if it's too cold, you know, it'll take longer. I've set my oven to gas mark too. I'll turn that off now and put that on there. Just like that. And then we'll cook that for a minimum of three hours. We'll put that lid on there. And all that remains me to say is cheers. Or shall I say santé? See you in three hours. Right, we're just at the halfway point of the cooking now. This is an hour and a half. Let's take the lid off. Just take that cartouche off a minute. Look how lovely and rich that is in there. Just give that a stir up. Those lovely chunks of meat. Dark, rich colour. All right, put the cartouche back on there. Get it back in, another hour and a half. Okay, I've just took my stew out of the oven. This has been going for three and a half hours now. Just going to take that cartouche off, as you can see. If you have a look in there, oh, that beef's taken on that lovely ruby red colour of the Bordeaux. Now this is a crazy bit now. I'm just going to show you this. This has been three and a half hours, and as you can see, it can, it's hot. You can virtually peel that off the bone. But what I'm going to do, this is the mad bit is I'm going to leave that now overnight to cool down. So what will happen then, as you can see there's a little film of oil on there, is when you cool it down, that will form a disc which you can peel off. So when we make the, the stock, the sauce, sorry, you know, we've got no oil in it. It's just that pure beefy flavour. So we're going to leave that overnight. I mean, another way is you could get, you know, some kitchen towel and take that off. But I like to do it that way, you know, because with any stew, you leave it overnight, you know, another day, and all them flavours mingle together and it's 10 times tastier than if you was to eat it now. So we're gonna turn that off, cool it down, then we'll come back tomorrow, we'll skim it off, reduce it, and then we'll serve it up with our lovely mashed potato and beans. So we'll just have a quick look in there. Just wanna show you. I mean, you can eat that now. Okay then, let's get this uh, meat out of here, let's get it reduced. Like I said, I left mine overnight just so the flavours amalgamate a bit more, you know. And obviously, that layer of fat that was on there, you know, I peeled off this morning, but in all fairness, there wasn't a lot on. So, you know, you don't have to do this bit. You just, you know, carry on from when the, the stew was boiling. So, what we're going to do is going to take that lovely meat out. As you can see, it's starting to shrink away from that bone. If you can see on that plate there, absolutely fantastic. So, I'm going to remove all that. And then I'm going to strain that liquor then, and we're going to reduce it. So, you know, I'm not going to leave the onions in. But what I will do is I will pick out some of the carrots to go on the dish. I mean, look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Have a look at that plate of steaming beautifulness. Right, let's strain that liquor. So I'm going to get me a saucepan. Simple. Hollander. I'm just going to tip that liquor in there, catch all the bits. Like that. Give it a tap to get through. And you're left with your carrots and your onions. And there's that liquor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that on that back on. Remove that. Put it on there. No lid on. Full pout. And we're going to reduce that by half. So I've got my liquor on there reducing, as you can see. I've just put my potatoes on for the mash. And we're going to sort out the meat. Now you can leave this meat in chunks. I mean, it's a bit hot at the moment. But what I like to do, as you can see, how gentle it just pulls off that bone 
I mean, so I'm going to let that cool down a bit. I'm going to start tearing that meat off. Then what we'll do, I've saved my carrots. That's what you do, nice and chunky. When that's reduced, we put it all back in there. Get the potato mash, get the beans on. Jobs are good. So as you can see, that tail has yielded a lot of meat. I mean, this is so soft and tender. When you're considering how much work that joint does. I mean, look at that, just pull apart. And that bone, I just took it off. All that collagen's broken down. Oh. Mm, beef lollipops. So what I'm going to do, obviously I've got my oxtail meat, I've pulled it off. You don't have to do this, you know, leave it on the bone, but I reckon it looks, you know, a bit better. I'm going to save my carrots. And what we're going to do, we're going to turn that uh, liquor down a bit now. We're just, just going to gently warm all this back through in it. Trust me, this is something special. So you can see I've got my potatoes on. I'm just warming this through now. I just want you to have a look in there. Look how nice that looks. Just have a taste of that, see what that tastes like. I mean that. That leaving that overnight has done that the world of good. So we give it a bit of pepper, a bit of salt. We'll just keep that warming through. Right, we're on the final straight now. Got my potatoes on, so I can mash them. Put my beans on, and as you can see, that's just gently warming through at the back. I'll turn that down a little bit. Another five minutes, plate up. Right, guys, the minute we've all been waiting for. So I'll show you that lovely mash there. That's uh, whatever the weight of the potatoes, at half of the weight again of butter. Now, you know I ain't no professional chef, so I'm just going to give it some of that. I've got clean hands, so don't worry, I'm just going to man my beans on like that. And then PS the resistance. We get some of that beef. Some of them carrots. Have another couple of carrots on there, and a bit of that liquor, bit of, just a little bit on there, and there you have it. My oxtail stew with mash and seasonal local beans. All that remains is for me to try it. I'm just gonna use a spoon. Just look at that. That wine is so rich. Flavours have a bit of that mash as well. I mean, that just melts in the mouth. That is absolutely fantastic. Remember, guys, a tail is not just for swatting flies. Thanks for watching.